Well, aloha and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me in this week's podcast. My name is Paul Fletcher and this is The Healing Source. Very, very excited this week because this is the capstone on a 10-week series. As you know, in my podcast called The Healing Source, I have been doing series and this is actually the seventh of all the series. I've been doing it almost one year now. And this particular uh, series is a 10 week long one. And what have we been doing? Well, if you've been with me and following, we have been doing the 10 Da. This is the 10th of the 10 Da series, the greatest enlightenment. What did you miss? What do you need to go back and watch? <clears throat> you missed Da I, the greatest love, Da Quan Chu, the greatest forgiveness. Dat Sebei, the greatest compassion. The fourth of these qualities is Da Guang Ming, the greatest light. Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility, is number five. Greatest harmony, Da He She, is number six. The greatest flourishing, Da Chang Shang, is number seven. Two weeks ago, we did Da Gan An, the greatest gratitude. And then last week, we completed first nine with Da Fu Wu which is the greatest service. Now, if you missed any of those, make sure you uh, subscribe, go back and watch them because each one is a standalone uh, slice of wisdom. When we employ these 10 qualities in our life, including today, Da Yuan Man, the greatest enlightenment, when we employ these 10 qualities, we could have an extraordinary shift in our life. Now, this week is all about the greatest enlightenment, Da Yuan Man. So what is Da Yuan Man? What is the greatest enlightenment? Well, as has been expressed, it is the 10th of these 10 qualities. Why was it placed last? Because when you employ the other nine qualities, then they assist you to reach the ultimate condition which is the greatest enlightenment. What then is the greatest enlightenment? Well, to be perfectly frank, if I could explain that, then I would be enlightened. And I, no different than you, am on the path. I can share with you and will share with you my understanding, having trained with three enlightened masters. And first question becomes, well, how do you know they're enlightened? Well, I know this because the third master I trained with has done a great deal of teaching in the last 15 years on what is enlightenment and how to reach it. So I will be sharing with you my understanding of what he has shared, but certainly I have not reached the highest levels that are capable and can be attained. And having trained with someone who understands it and can teach others to reach that level, I was able to ascertain that the previous two grandmasters that I had trained under were in fact enlightened beings. <clears throat> but just like a truly enlightened being, they don't ever uh, pump themselves up and announce themselves as such because they are unconditional universal servants. They are here to serve and bring others to a higher level of consciousness. And so this is the nature of a truly enlightened being. They are selfless. A truly enlightened being does not think of themselves at all. They are completely selfless in every sense of the word, which means they have melded with the source. They are one. They are no longer I, 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 me, me, me. They no longer have a personalized agenda, and they don't think of themselves first before serving others. And when people make that uh, shift, because it is, it is a, a, a process of shift, then it is literally as natural as a breath. There's not even a thought where should I take care of me or should I take care of them? Should I save their life and lose mine? It doesn't matter. A person who is truly uh, fully conscious and fully enlightened doesn't ever think about a choice. It's just a natural way of being. Everything is one. And that emulates through all their thoughts, all their words, and all of their actions. So what does that mean, emulates through the thoughts, words, and actions? So what is enlightenment? It is a way of being that represents alignment with source and complete oneness. Why is enlightenment important? 
ultimately, we all come from this same source. You do, I do, a dog, a cat does, trees, mountains, rivers, streams, planets, uh, uh, life outside of Earth. Everything comes from the same source. Every speck of energy and matter, animate or inanimate, seen or unseen, comes from this same source. And accordingly, it will find its way back to the source. So there are many different perspectives on uh, why is enlightenment important. I will share with you what my teacher has shared with me, and it resonates with my heart. And what uh, doctor, my teacher is Dr. and Master Shah. Uh, and you can learn more about him at drsha.com. And what I've come to understand from the wisdom and teachings of my teacher is that in, the reason that enlightenment is so important is so that we can uplift others because the ultimate goal is for us all to return back to the source, not just me, everybody. And I can tell you, uh, I mentioned this last week, but I can tell you as a truth that when an individual, you, me, anybody, when they truly reach a very high level of consciousness and they are communicating directly with the source at a very, very, very high level, they will be in a position where they have the choice to simply leave this body. In that moment, they can consciously, purposely say, I'm done with this physical life here on earth. And they can go to the heavenly realms and abide in a very high layer of frequency with the source. In that moment, they are given choice to stay here on earth and to help others to find enlightenment, meaning to help others to recognize the oneness of everything. And that is the highest level of selfless service because when an enlightened being makes that choice, then they are what they are saying is, uh, I understand what enlightenment is. It is not about me, me, me. The, the, the enlightened soul that reaches that level and chooses, no, I'm done with earth, I'm going to go. That soul is actually not near as enlightened as the one that says, no, I'm going to stay here and serve others. So there are levels and layers of enlightenment. And that's an additional piece of information that you want to become conscious of. So why do we want to become enlightened? So that we can be the highest version of a soul. Oneness is exactly that. It is alignment with all. And uh, you've heard this statement, or maybe you haven't, so you'll hear it now, that when the tide comes in, all the ships rise equally with the tide. If humanity represents 8 billion ships, we want all of the ships to rise with the enlightened tide so that we can all become one in the greatest light. Give me just a moment. I don't want this live stream to be interrupted by any of the family members. Okay. And now I'm going to switch gears and share with you a couple of different things about enlightenment that I have learned from my teacher. What, this one this might be new to a lot of you. The first is there is not just one type of enlightenment. There is actually more than one. There is body enlightenment. There is heart enlightenment. There is mind enlightenment. There is soul enlightenment. I, I didn't even understand there was more than one until I started getting this wisdom and education. So let's go with those. The first one is called soul enlightenment. And soul enlightenment is what occurs when a person has done enough service, moved away from selfishness, and moved towards oneness to such a degree that all of their lifetimes of experience represent a level where their heart center is much more open. They don't really think of themselves so much. Their life is dedicated to serve others. Think of a Mother Teresa. Think of you know the other souls that have a, a, a history of unconditional service. Those souls may or may not be enlightened, but when a soul uh, uh, moves, when a soul becomes fatter and fatter as a result of their virtue, as a result of their service, the soul also moves up and through what's called the soul houses, what you might know as chakras. Uh, in the wisdom that we have learned, that I have learned, these chakras are referred to as soul houses because the soul uh, resides with us. And as the soul grows, becomes bigger, fatter, more virtuous, more wise, 
in its alignment and um, pathway to return to the source, they also, the soul moves up through uh, and in between the chakras until the soul sits above the crown of the head, in which case the soul is fully and completely enlightened. Now, that doesn't mean they can't still physically live here. There are souls on earth that have reached that level of attainment, and they're still physically here. <clears throat> so soul enlightenment, according to the wisdom that's been shared with me to date, initiates when a soul has grown so big and moved up to where it's at least in the heart center. That person then is a very heart-centered person, unconditional service-oriented. And then higher levels of wisdom and enlightenment could bring that soul much, much higher. How many lifetimes it takes? Kind of hard to say. There is now also mind enlightenment. Mind enlightenment is one of the most difficult levels of enlightenment to achieve. And Master Shah would say, my, uh, it is easier to physically walk up to a mountain and push it than it is to reach the complete layer of mind enlightenment. And he goes on to explain that mind enlightenment is when literally we are free of all thought. There is not a, a positive or negative thought. There is just no thought. Mind enlightenment is when something can happen. Uh, you can get burned. Somebody could spit on you. Somebody could, could bow at your feet. Um, Regardless of what it is, positive or negative, there is simply observation free of all dogma, judgment, criticism, positive, negative perceptions, ego, none of that's all gone. Uh, a person who is fully enlightened in their mind simply sees with clarity the oneness of everything and accordingly has unconditional love, which leads to the next level. It's called heart enlightenment. Someone who is fully enlightened at the level of the heart, uh, probably the best representation of that is the great ones known throughout history, such as Jesus, Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, Buddha, Krishna, Shiva, and so forth. Other great beings that, uh, that I might not be as familiar with, but they have a history of unconditional love and light. <clears throat> Never think of themselves. Those beings have obviously reached heart enlightenment where there is no thought of self at all. The final uh, level of enlightenment, at least in this physical realm, because of course there are even higher levels beyond that, but in this physical realm is called body enlightenment. And Master Shah shares that that's one of the hardest levels of enlightenment to reach. I would have thought mind enlightenment is hard, hard, you know, heart enlightenment where you're completely love and you have no thought whatsoever and, uh, you know, that alone sounds like monumental, <laughs> but he's saying, no, no, no. Body enlightenment is even harder because that is when your entire cellular matter, your entire Shen Qi Jing, as he would refer to it, every part of you, your organs, your cells, your systems, your bones, everything is literally pure light. Kind of like a Star Trek movie where you could just beam in and beam out, Scotty, anytime, uh, just think it and you go back to heaven you come here and you manifest and you go over to the tibetan mountains and talk to the monk and then you go somewhere else a person who is an individual or a soul who is fully body enlightened they are in essence a light being so that level of frequency and vibration according to the wisdom that i've come to understand over these many many years could take the average soul uh billions lifetimes billion with a b very 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 difficult to to move from original point of source through all the different experiences to the point of being pure light again so there is an unlimited amount of wisdom and information that can be shared with you on enlightenment and prior to uh, coming live with you today i I ask for transmission of information. I also did a short meditation and what, what should I share? And the first sentence and the last sentence basically said the same thing, which is greatest humility. You cannot possibly understand what you don't understand. Therefore, do not profess to teach it, only explain what you have learned. And this is a really important statement for, for everybody here. The more humility that we have, which is what? Da, uh, da gan 
excuse me, da qianbei, the fifth quality, right, of the ten da qualities, the more humility we have, the greater our potential of reaching a state of heart purity, mind purity, and so forth. Now, how then, how do we reach enlightenment? Again, I'm only sharing what I've learned. Certainly, I have not reached any of these high levels that I'm sharing that I've heard about and read about through my teachers. <clears throat> how do, do we reach enlightenment? Well, one of the slices of wisdom that Master Shah has given us amongst the million or so in his 30 plus books, go get some of his books, read them, is that we as a human being operate in this third dimensional frequency and vibration. So we must shift our frequency and vibration to that of Mother Earth, to that of heaven, and then to that of the creator, because the creator created heaven and Mother Earth. And so it's a processional shift by which we have to raise our frequency and vibration. It's a multi-front approach. One of the first things to do is to pay attention to your thoughts, words, and actions, because we, we as a soul, cumulatively are a result of every thought, every word, and every action we've had in this and all lifetimes. Think about that for a moment. You are not just you, your personality. You are, are very temporary. Your soul is forever. You are temporary. And so that alone should be very humbling. And in that humility, we need to say, if I'm going to move from where I'm at as this personality, I need to have great control over every thought, word, and action from this moment forward to disallow any negative thought because they're just as harmful as a harmful word. And most of us want to be in denial of that, but doesn't change the truth of that. So the initiation of enlightenment to start moving in that direction, we have to stop creating negative vibrations in our field. Bad karma, whatever you want to call it. We already have some in our vibration or we wouldn't be here. And so we need to clean some of it up and we need to not create more. So by watching our thoughts, our words, and our actions, choosing uh, not to have negative thoughts, words, or actions, and when we do, because invariably that happens uh, as a result of what's already on our vibration, creating problems for us, uh, when, invariably when those negative thoughts, words, or, or actions happen, we need to instantly apologize. Who do we apologize to? We apologize to any souls that have been affected by that. Because it could have been a negative thought about somebody across the street that didn't meet our perception of what is good or okay. An instant apology means we don't create more negative um, quantum, quantum entanglement with that person, bad karma with that person. We don't want to impact their vibration negatively and accordingly impact our vibration negatively. So by watching our thoughts, words, and actions, we can, as best as possible, eliminate adding more to our process of cleaning up so that we can be enlightened. We also need to unwind what has already, what is already in our vibration, okay? And Master Shah uh, and other teachers, of course, have given us many tools to assist since I am most versed in the wisdom and teachings of the Tao and the Tao wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us. I will share with you what he has given us to assist in this enlightenment process. He has given us song and mantra. And what he shares with us, so you want to, to control your thoughts, words, and actions, then always keep a high frequency mantra on the end of your lips. Always chant. Now, if you grew up Christian, you only believe Catholic and you stumble across this and you think, you know, this guy talking is full of it. The, okay, then just chant Jesus, 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 or Mother Mary, Mother Mary, Mother Mary. I don't care what you what you believe, it's irrelevant. What is relevant is, is it a positive frequency of vibration? So if you grew up with Krishna, chant Krishna, Krishna. Whatever it is that has a positive frequency and vibration for you, keep that on the end of your tongue, constantly chanting it. And this is how you can control your mind, mind enlightenment, remember, and your heart, because that positive mantra is expanding your heart, and it's keeping you from having negative thoughts. Right. So one of the um, tricks, if you will, or one of the higher levels of wisdom is never let mantra leave your mouth, meaning always be chanting something. This has very, very positive multiple side effects. Easy to say, easy to talk about, more on the complicated side to implement because we are so used to acting out, speaking out, um, acting on our thoughts, not 
being conscientious. It, it takes a little while to to be very, very, very consistent. But it is one of the, the most powerful tools to move towards much higher levels of awakening and enlightenment. As we do not allow negative thoughts, words, and actions to enter our field, and as we do not offer negative thoughts, words, and actions, we then make ourselves a much more pure and clear channel through which the source, which is we are bathing in the source, source is in me, I am in source, the source and that positive flow of information and wisdom, intelligence, and enlightenment, which is literally coming to us at all times, just like a waterfall, can actually start being felt and heard and acted upon. You might receive insights, what to do, how to do it, what to say, what not to say. You might be guided to go do this over here when you your mind was saying go do this. And that is a natural side effect of quieting our heart, quieting our mind by employing some of these conscious processes and, and, and uh, uh, skill sets that Master Shah has brought to us. One of them being never let a mantra leave your lips, chant all the time. Another thing that he has gifted us with is the Tao calligraphies, which act as a portal through which the source frequency and vibration can help each and all of us to heal and transform ourselves. When that Tao frequency and vibration uh, comes to us through uh, interacting with these uh, healing art, this Tao art of Tao calligraphy, then that frequency and vibration helps to clear the stuff behind us, the past, right? Uh, our thoughts, words, and actions from today backwards and from other lifetimes can create either positive vibrations in our field, thereby resulting in good things, success, etc., or it can create negative vibrations in our field, meaning our soul, okay, meaning our karma, good and bad. I'm stating the same thing in different ways, but we want to be able to wash the stuff behind us and clear it. And by tracing the karma, excuse me, by tracing the calligraphies, chanting mantra, we effectively can reduce those blockages from the past. Okay? Another simple tool is forgiveness practice. Okay? And dear all souls, if I have ever um, cheated, lied, stolen, broken vows of love to you, you know, just take a look at where your struggles and challenges are in your life. It's pretty easy to identify where you might need to do some forgiveness practice. If you have challenges in relationship, there's a reasonable likelihood you've created challenges for other people's relationships. If you have challenges in finances, guess what? You could have created challenges for others in a different lifetime. And it's irrelevant that you remember those. It's irrelevant that you have any specific information. What is relevant is that you do something about it. You recognize that I'm having challenges and suffering today. That means that there's a reasonable probability that any time prior to my ability to remember, I may have made some mistakes. Could have brought some suffering financially to others because I could have been greedy then, even though I'm not now. Or maybe you were a gossiper and you harmed people's relationships. Therefore, you, you have trouble getting relationships now. If you can witness what's happening in your life that's not working out for you, and you can do forgiveness around that, then you are, in essence, uh, Going, making effort to unwind the past. And then as you are forgiven, that load becomes lighter and you can uh, start achieving your goals and dreams now. Okay, So this is a, a huge oversimplification of, of some of the, the wisdom tools, techniques, and processes that our teacher has given us, that my teacher has given me. And I'm trying to encapsulate them in such a way where you can both understand the pathway to enlightenment and how you can make steps towards it. To be able to achieve enlightenment in one lifetime is absolutely possible. There are quite a few who have accomplished that. But my understanding is it 99.999% of the time requires the presence and the wisdom and teachings of someone who has already attained it. That's why I've trained with these individual teachers, and that's why I'm working with Dr. and Master Shah. It's not so I can reach the end goal of becoming enlightened and then say, woo, I, I, I made it. Bye-bye, everybody. Good luck. <laughs> that's not why I'm doing it. I understand what I've been sharing with you, that it's so I can be a better universal servant, that I can help the rest of the ships rise at the same time. Okay, And heaven, the source, your creator, knows your heart. You don't even have to think or say anything. Source knows your heart. So if you have a desire and you have an intention 
to stop suffering and to make a difference for others, to act upon that. Be that unconditionally universal servant. Ask forgiveness uh, for when you are suffering at the hands of others or on the job or the career path, whatever it might be. And also do something about expecting positive, right? You could have a lot of good virtue in your account and good virtue trying to bring something good to you, but it does require you to open your heart to receive it. Okay, we've all made mistakes. You don't need to wallow in forgiveness the whole time. Do that the necessary amount. And then the rest of the time, start stating positive things. I'm grateful that my source provides me everything that I need today and forward. Okay? Repeat something that has a positive uh, energy about it, that is uplifting as you speak it, and that brings about a resolve. I'm so grateful that the source has already found a solution for this challenge. Thank you, God. Okay. It's a very simple statement. I just made it up on the spot, but it reflects uh, utilizing your thoughts, your words, and your actions in a positive, forward, energetic matter. Okay. So sometimes a lot of us get stuck in this past stuff that brings a lot of challenges in our life. We don't see that it's possible to reach towards this goal of enlightenment with all the challenges that we have. But if we actually recognize that those challenges, are simply temporary, and we might be exacerbating them by putting emphasis on them versus applying the tools and techniques that have been shared today and keeping a positive mantra on our lips and keeping affirmations that, that things of our, that heaven, thank you heaven for already resolving this. I'm very grateful. And then you release it to heaven and voila, one, two, three weeks later, heaven resolves it because you started shifting from an old pattern to a more positive way of thoughts, words, and actions. Again, so little time to explain such a gargantuan uh, slice of wisdom, the greatest enlightenment. There is uh, at Dr. and Master Shah's website, drsha.com, there is um, the 10 calligraphy cards are available of each one of these 10 DAWs. And I absolutely recommend that you run, don't walk, to get those cards. Uh, within each of those uh, calligraphy slices of art is portals to much higher frequency and vibration. And when you connect to whichever calligraphy that is, you would simply state, dear the, the healing, love, and light within this piece of source art for maybe it's greater, greatest humility or greatest love, whatever the the, the uh, Tenda calligraphy is, could you please bless me to release this challenge, this suffering, and open my heart to da 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 da. And then just trace it 10, 15 minutes, half hour. The more you trace, the faster the shift can occur. And apply what has been shared with you today. Never let the mantra lead your lips. What mantra, Paul? The mantra that carries a high frequency and vibration. Okay? You can simply repeat, God, 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 if that's what you like. Anything that you know has a high frequency and vibration, repeat it constantly, and it will bring to you great return. Okay, This is the completion of this particular uh, series. Next week, I will have a new series. I'll have to go into meditation and decide what that will be. Uh, I invite you to like, <clears throat> to subscribe. If you are unfamiliar with my website, wellspringoflight.com, please go there, learn about all the services that I offer. I have a five-day free program where you can join my daily sessions and trace the calligraphies and learn more about this. Uh, it includes a, a, a guided session, which is a several hundred dollar value. So take advantage of that if you're not familiar with my website, wellspringoflight.com. Next week, I will see you, and I want to say thank you for coming, and until then, have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.